Hello and welcome to my first adventure into lace making, specifically uh, Batsonburg lace. I first saw this lace making technique in uh, Marika's or Jackie Bow's costuming videos about starting lace making with this technique and I thought that looks cute. Um, I thought it looked really cool, um, but I'm not sure if I want to try that and then I was just lightly looking around, you know, you need a certain lace tape and I had no idea where to find it, uh, I'm in Europe so could I get it shipped here, like if hypothetically I were to do this, where would I find the lace tape? So I was just casually looking around a little bit and then I came across somebody online who was selling lace tape in bunches like these uh, second hand for really cheap and I was like I may as well buy it because if someday I want to do a project with Battenberg lace I'm going to need the lace tape and it's not very expensive right now and this person is not very far from me so it's e it's easy to ship here and then of course I got it and immediately started making a sampler. <laughs> I was bitten by the lace bug. In Marika's video she uh, referenced a number of books from which she made her first sampler and started learning this lace making. One of those books was the Priscilla Battenberg uh, and Point Lace book which is free to find online on archive and of course I'll link it down below um, and this because it's so easily available this is what I used to make my first sampler. As I went I just picked out the net stitches I thought looked nice or looked fun and um, progressively went to the more complex stitches sometimes skipping some just picking what I wanted to do, but still going from easy to more complex. Since I don't have a lace pillow, because at this point I don't even know if I'm into making lace, I um, was wondering how I should improvise. Uh, and I looked at videos how to improvise a lace pillow, and eventually I saw a comment under one of Marika's videos that said they used an embroidery hoop to keep the backing fabric uh, tight in order to make lace on it. And I thought, I have a big embroidery hoop, I'm going to do that. So I used a backing fabric and an embroidery hoop to create a stable base um, onto which I could uh, draw a grid and baste the uh, lace tape. And then I had the framework for my first sampler, which I then proceeded to fill square by square with different stitches from the book. The first square is filled with a single net stitch or a Brussels point, which is illustrated in figure 38 of the book I referenced. The second square is filled with a double net stitch or point de Sorrento, which is in figure 39.
third stitch is called a three stitch or also a, var a variation of the point of the Sorrento and it is figure 40. For the fourth square I attempted open Spanish point or figure 51. Square number five was filled with petite pointeuse unique, figure 47. Number six was filled with a Spanish net stitch, figure 63. Square number 7 was filled with a variation on the previous Spanish net stitch, illustrated in figure 64. Square 8 was filled with the cobweb stitch, figure 67. Final square was filled with a variation on the point de Bruxelles, uh, which is illustrated in figure 72, in which the net stitches are arranged in downward pointing triangles.
So now that we have our sampler done, what now? What are we gonna do with it? Well, I'm not really a white lace type of lady. Um, however, I am, as you may have noticed, a black lace type of girl. So I thought we should try dyeing it. Um, and since I always like to keep the first attempt at any new skill uh, for as it is, I'm not gonna dye this. I'm gonna make a second sampler, more practice, which is always great, and then I'm going to dye that. Alrighty, so here is the second sampler on my right. It is slightly bigger than the first one because I figured, you know, more area, more practice. And I certainly see some improvement, especially in the later stitches. Um, I think they came out much neater. I'm still unsure about what to do with the center stitch, number five. I haven't quite figured out how it's meant to look and, and be done, but overall I'm very happy with um, how the second one looks compared to the first. Um, and yeah, this is what we're going to dye. In order to dye the second sampler, this is what we're going to use. It is a hand wash DIY textile dye from Dylon, and I bought the black of course. Um, I've never used it before so I'm very curious to see how well or how it works. It can only be used on natural fiber which is why I have the cotton thread um, and why I did a little burn test before I even started all of this on the lace tape in order to check whether it was made of natural fibers because of course I bought it second hand from somebody who just had it lying around um, and I wasn't entirely sure that it was natural fiber but seeing the burn test I think it is natural I'm not quite sure what fiber it is but I think it is natural so that is why I'm going to give it a go let's get to it I first weighed my sampler and then I calculated how much of the other ingredients I would need to keep the same ratio as was stated in the instruction. I then followed those instructions in order to actually dye the sampler, uh, which involves putting all the ingredients together in a specific order, and then continually stirring the mixture with the sampler in it for 15 minutes, and then occasionally stirring it during the next 45 minutes. After this, I removed the sample, and washed it out according to the instructions again. And after drying for a bit, here's what we have. It is pretty black. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it. The color took on the thread or yarn as well as the uh, lace tape. So that's really good. It is not completely dry yet, but in, I, I'm satisfied that a lot of color indeed got into the sampler and took the threads and uh, yeah I'm really happy with it. It is much more my style now which is also really nice and uh, yeah next up is to imagine the projects in which I could make myself some nice black lace. That is all I have to show you today about making these two samplers and dyeing the second one. I'm very happy with the results they gained and I hope you enjoyed coming along on this adventure and uh, I hope to see you soon with maybe another this project or another sewing project anyway. I hope I'll see you there. Bye!